Jumbo fellow adventurer, it's Mike Dooley. Time for a spiritual tune-up. And one of those great questions has just come in. Can we die before our time? Mike, a celebrated man in Holland who did so many good things, was just murdered. He didn't deserve to leave this world like that. The country is heartbroken. Can we die before our time? This question uh, is understandably framed from a place of, from, of grief and uh, not knowing um, the mechanics of uh, our departure, uh, understandably so. Uh, it's not easy. It's not uh, common knowledge by any stretch. Our entire civilization is built upon the notion that the worst thing that could ever happen to anybody is that they die. Um, right off the bat, the, the, the word deserving, um, it's not the right word. Deserving uh, being, you know, this person did not deserve to die, this person did not deserve to die that way, um, takes the whole thing out of context. To understand and have comfort uh, at this difficult time and sympathies uh, to all affected by any loss because it is always such a shock to the system when we use our physical senses almost exclusively to understand reality. What was there is gone, gone forever, never to return. Um, it's such a loss. Uh, there are no words for it. But by drilling down the truth, the truth will set you free. You'll start understanding things uh, that will frame the whole episode in another way. No one dies before their time. Not ever. No matter how seemingly random or bizarre the circumstances. Um, this is almost too much for me to even comprehend. Uh, I first read these ideas from the Seth material by Jane Roberts. Uh, I'm not steeped enough myself in my multidimensional um, existence to be able to grasp that on my own. But sh certainly by this stage of my journey, 40 years into metaphysics and a lot of um, deductions and going within, I can see the absolute truth of it. Uh, no one ever dies before their time. The thing that determines our death always is either we have achieved all that we wanted to achieve in this incarnation or given our mindset, our maybe limiting beliefs and or the world order around us the objectives we have remaining to achieve are no longer achievable. You know, very often, most often, that would be a function of the person's mind. They're not open enough uh, or willing enough to face what they set out to face. And so the objective of the life can no longer be met. Um, or the first step again was you achieved what you wanted to achieve and there was nothing else you wanted to achieve in this incarnation as who you were. Uh, we entirely always choose at some higher level, but not out of our reach. If there was a study done of people who have passed, I would venture a guess that 80 to 90% of them could be viewed as ready either through just a total satisfaction and peace they have with life to the point that they're not even anxious to go do anything anymore. It's just like all good. They achieved what they wanted to achieve and they were ready. <clears throat> Remember, when one door closes, another door opens. 10,000 doors open. It is not a terrible thing to die. Except for those who are left behind who don't understand the mechanics of a life on earth, why we're here, what happens before, we get here and what happens afterwards. So it's a decision we all make um, that we are able to be consciously aware of um, and, uh, and in some cases just a little bit beyond our awareness where perhaps there is a conflict and we don't understand the conflict, but it has shut down our ability to achieve things that we wanted to achieve. All right. Seth said something that was so startling and so shocking and so amazing. 
Seth said that in the deepest sense, every death is a suicide. Nobody dies without their approval. Nobody dies until they give their stamp. Now, I know that that can be uh, extremely painful to hear if you know of somebody who died uh, at the hands of someone else or in other circumstances. Uh, I'm not saying that a murder is ever justified. No way am I saying that. You know, lock them up, put them behind bars, rehabilitate them better. Um, but, but anybody, anything that happens to anybody, it's part of their creation, intended or unintended. So uh, to help you understand this, under, realize that the events that play out, circumstances that play out, in time and space were always scripted, created, and recorded um, beyond the curtains of time and space. Just like a movie that you watch in the comfort of your recliner seat, that you watch on a linear timeline, beginning, middle, crises, uh, comeback, uh, and generally happy ending. Um, the entire film the production, the auditions, uh, the screenplay, the adaptations, the edits, uh, the, the various possible ways it could unplay, that was all crafted months, if not many years prior to it showing up on a silver screen. And it was beyond the curtains of time and space that our lives are written. And they're being written right now. This is not something foisted upon us. This is not something that we wrote uh, before this lifetime began. There is a portion of our multidimensional beinghood that writes and rewrites the script on the fly. And it is only the tail end of our productions that shows up in these sacred jungles of time and space. Nothing is left to chance. As I spoke about a, a week or two ago in a nighttime dream, do you think you stub your toe by accident? Do you think you fell down in a nighttime dream by accident? Do, do you think you, you, it's easy to see from this perspective that nothing that happens in a nighttime dream would be random because you're making it up. And some of it has profound meaning and some of it has a light meaning and some of it might show up because you believe stuff happens. And the same thing in life. Some things have a profound meaning and other stuff happens because we believe stuff happens, you know? Uh, and it's not usually poised, uh, phrased um, quite that way. So in the dream of life, if you will, uh, the whole thing is scripted beyond the curtains of time and space uh, so that when we experience it, it all seems seamless on a linear timeline, just like when you watch a movie. It's like, oh, there was a before, there was a beginning, there's an after. Um, but all of it was created. Sometimes a movie is shot, the ending is shot before the beginning is shot. But they put it together on a timeline so that you can, you know, be entertained and enthralled. Remember, in life, it is the end result, our desire or our fear that which we focus upon, which orchestrates backwards the circumstances we meet. Like GPS navigation, you're thinking, I'm going to Miami Beach. The universe is like, well, you're in Orlando. To get to Miami Beach, you're going to have to go left, right, right, left, around the traffic, miss the detour. The end result forces the details. So when somebody's end result on the horizon is the completion of their objectives to be met in time and space, then working backwards, oh, they're going to be here. They're going to be in traffic. Uh, sometimes a death would be crafted or a murder would be crafted or a genocide would be crafted um, for many, many, many reasons with objectives being met by everyone aware of it, including a grieving nation. And sometimes the person who dies at the hands of another will choose to do so to serve as a wake-up call to the nation, to the world, to atrocities, bad behavior, short-sightedness that, uh, if left unchecked, would take many more people down. So the person who might choose to be in harm's way, number one, would be ready and it would be part of their objective, not only having met 
what they wanted to achieve in life, but now they can achieve something else on their way out, so to speak, since they were leaving anyway to fall prey to somebody else that will bring attention to the nation of injustices or countless other things. I know that words slip here. I know it may have sounded like I contradicted myself. I'm aware of that as I'm presenting this. It's very, very slippery, very, very dicey to try to put explanations of the nature of reality in a linear term um, using stark words where words don't exist that would be better to be used. Uh, and so it's, it's a bit challenging. But the bottom line is nobody dies before their time. Um, and death isn't a bad thing, which doesn't justify murder by any uh, or bad behavior by, by any means. Um, we are all creators of everything that happens in our lives. Nothing is by chance. Yes, we're sometimes unintentional creators, but never in my understanding of reality would we unintentionally or accidentally be like, whoops, oh man, you know, I, I slipped and fell and hit my head and, and uh, what would have been cannot be because I got clumsy on the wet pavement. Um, there would be safeguards, there would be reality adjustments, there would be tweaks by my higher self and or angels that if there was an actual slip and fall that knocked me unconscious and created a hemorrhage, if I wasn't ready to die, I wouldn't die. Too many people go through those kind of slip and falls and car accidents and cancers and just don't die. And others go through lesser versions and then they do. What's the commonality? It is the underlying intentions and objectives of those who experienced what they experienced. Okay, that was a good one. Uh, I mean, a good question. Uh, I hope I did. Uh, I hope I did it some service and brought some clarity. I, I, I am not trying to put a happy face on uh, somebody's departure. Uh, I do know, however, as we can all sense that they are in a better place. Uh, not that it's not to speak badly of this place, because this is heaven on earth if you choose to see it. Well, happy Friday, everybody. Today's the last day that Hay House is offering my Playing the Matrix laser-focused course on creating wealth and abundance. It is financially oriented, although abundance could be anything you want it to be. Uh, the course is normally $200. Uh, today's the last day for until a year from now that you can get it for, I think, $99. If it doesn't live up to uh, your expectations, you get a full refund. So check out the link below on Facebook. Swipe up on Instagram to get the Playing the Matrix Laser Focused course. Have an amazing Friday, the best weekend of your life so far. I look forward to seeing you on Monday. Until then, remember, thoughts become things. Tali ho amigo. And uh, while we're at it, Blurta, welcome. Glad you're here. Kim, Beverly, Winnie, Justin, Steve, Christine. Glad you're here on Facebook. Jeb, the mall flower is back. PK, PK Detman, can't pronounce that too well, but thank you for being here. All right, Kalo, and uh, I'm so happy everyone's here. Kim, Kimmy Coach, hasta pronto, have a good weekend.